All right. <clears throat> Hello, friends. What's up, dudes? We got a review today, a Tucson, the Tucson TS-269. This incredible knife right here, we're going to talk all about it. First of all, if you haven't subscribed, please do it. Why haven't you? Follow me on Instagram also, duties underscore daggers. Um, that would be awesome. Thank you, dudes. Uh, and please like the video before you forget. Thank you. So, this is a Tucson. If you're not familiar uh, with Tucson knives, I'll give you a very brief little background on them. Um, they are an overseas manufacturer uh, that make uh, primarily, not only, but primarily, uh, a lot of titanium frame locks. Um, you know, very premium uh, build qualities, but with less expensive blade, uh, blade steel. This particular one is in D2, um, so you're getting a, a very premium knife, but with less premium blade steel, bringing the price of these down uh, to a very, very low uh, point. This knife is right around 100 bucks, which is, uh, even with D2, is uh, surprisingly, almost uh, mind-bogglingly cheap. <laughs> so... We're going to get into uh, all that in a sec, but uh, if you're looking for a premium feeling knife for a low price, you really cannot beat Tucson, in my opinion. And uh, that is the opinion of, uh, I would say, the majority of knife collectors and knife enthusiasts. So let's measure this knife. It's pretty big. Blade length, just under three and three quarters inch. The handle is four and three quarters inch and overall it's bigger than my ruler so that looks like to be about eight and a half inches about it's a big one um size comparisons let's throw it up against my other two sons here the two sun ts 300 a bit longer than that one two sun ts 216. These are my only three two sons at the moment, but uh, I plan on changing that. I'm a big fan of two sun. Uh, let's do a couple spider co's. The PM2, the NATO 5. There you go. And how about the Hogue Deca? There you go. That should do it. Now, we got to measure the thinness behind the edge. This is quite thin behind the edge. I, I measured it when I first got it, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but let's uh, let's measure it again. For a frame of reference, so you uh, kind of get what we're, we're talking about here, the baby banter uh, measurement behind the edge <clears throat> is 17 thousandths. The Benchmade Griptilian is uh, on the much thicker side at like 28 thousandths. Uh, the CBV Elementum is 20 thousandths, and uh, the Ontario Rat 2 is around 24 thousandths. So that should give you kind of an idea. 17 is pretty thin. Um, I have a knife that's around 13 or 12 thousandths. That's very thin. Um, opposite end of the spectrum, you know, Benchmade Griptilian at 28 thousandths. Let's see what we got. Taking a measured measurement back here right in front of the sharpening choil. We have come on, come on. All right, we have seventeen thousandths right there. At the middle, we've got well, it's thinner. Wow, sixteen thousandths in the middle, and then at the tip. We have 15 thousandths. So that's very thin. Um, that's even a little bit thinner than the baby banter. <laughs> um, so this thing is a crazy, crazy slicer. Uh, it really, really is. Um, so let's talk about the uh, overall construction of this baby. We have a full titanium construction. It's a frame lock. Titanium clip that works well. Um, I like the look of it too. You know, it's a milled titanium clip, uh, titanium backspacer, uh, titanium pivot collar that says uh, Tucson made in 
uh, Yang Zhang China. See right there. Um, and we have kind of um, an upswept uh, sort of blade here in uh, D2. The uh, designer of this knife is, um, gosh, I forget uh, what his name is. It Night Morning, I think it is. There's his maker's mark right there. You can see it says TS two sixty nine and D two right there. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's uh, you know what what the knife is made out of. Let's look at the handle. We have a lot of really cool milling going on here. Um, we have the pivot collar, and then we have these lines kind of radiating out from the pivot, which looks really neat, super, super neat. And we have that on both sides. Interesting, cool little detail. They continue that pattern on the lock bar here as well, um, which is really cool. They could have gotten lazy and just, you know, said, oh, you know, we don't need to do that, but they did. I like it. Um, then we have a, kind of a weird pattern on the rest of the knife. Um, it's kind of like a finer cross hatching down here in the this corner and this corner. And then where they meet in the middle, it's almost like just lines right here. Kind of like that cross hatching kind of grows until they meet in the middle. Um, pretty interesting. Um, it's the same way on both sides. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love milled titanium. And this one looks very nice. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. Um, let's check out the blade. So this is a um, not a full flat grind, but pretty close. We have a really nice uh, belt satin finish on the knife or on the blade. Pretty reflective one, too. Look at that. It's a really nice finish. I really like when um, when I see this sort of like highly reflect not highly but you know fairly reflective uh, belt satin finish i think it looks really good um we got a little bit of a harpoon notch here i almost wouldn't call it a harpoon notch because typically those are you know down towards the tip i'll call it like a thumb a thumb heart a thumb poon does that work <laughs> thumb poon i don't know um it's a harpoon but it's it's for your thumb um and for looks too um i think it looks awesome um Fat swedge, you know, largest uh, section of it is here, thins out towards almost all the way to the tip. We got our flat section there. But, but, you know, it's all kind of the same finish. You know, the flat, the swedge, and the bevel um, looks really nice. Same on both sides, obviously. Now, I don't typically go for this type of blade shape, you know. I'm typically a sheep's foot, Warren Cliff, you know, drop point with a low tip kind of guy. Um, for some reason, uh, I just think this blade goes so well with its handle. Um, you know, just the whole package here is so, uh, aesthetically pleasing to me that I just, uh, you know, I'm drawn to it. I really like it. Uh, and you can still do utility cuts with this, you know, you're kind of almost using like this bit of belly, like an inch back from the tip, this whole area right here. Um, unless you lift up higher, but. Um, it's not too, too bad, you know, obviously not ideal for, uh, you know, uh, utility cuts, but it'll, 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 it'll work sort of, uh, fairly well. You know, it, it helps that it's very thin too behind the edge. So, you know, you're still able to do uh, slice or, um, do u utility cuts pretty well. As far as slicing, this is going to do really well. Um, you know, you kind of want to keep the material right in here. You know, if you, if it kind of strays to over here, it's going to tend to kind of whoop slip off the uh, the tip but you know it's fairly easy to just keep it right in this kind of uh less belly area right in here as you're slicing through it um so as long as you just kind of pay attention to what you're doing um you know you can break down cardboard with this thing uh super super easily um we have some milling going on inside the handle for weight relief let me get my light out See, can you see that? Kind of. I don't know. It's in there. There's milling. Just trust me. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I almost forgot. I have a. I bought a scale. So we can now measure uh, the weight. We can see how heavy these babies are. Let's see what we got here. Um, mode. What do we want? Do we want ounces? Yeah.
<laughs> it's too heavy for the scale. It says, uh, what does it say? It says that, whatever that means. So, all right. Gonna have to get a different type of scale, I guess. Um, so it's not too heavy, though. Uh, as far as, you know, for as big as the knife is, and being full titanium, it's really not that heavy. Um, a lot of milling inside. Um, ergonomics. Very, very good. Um, looking at the knife, you might not think so. You know, we have kind of uh, an abrupt, you know, uh, kind of thing right here. Um, you know, the handle, it almost has like this weird little peak right here. You know, if you start at the uh, the uh, thumb poon, it kind of goes down and then comes up to a little point here and then back down and then at another point right back here. But it works really well. This this kind of area right here kind of sits right in here on my hand um, pretty comfortably. Um, my, uh, you know, well, it depends if you're choked back. Choked back, really comfortable. Um, choked up really comfortable too you know it's not the the most ergonomic knife in the world but i don't have hot spots um i can definitely say that um so pretty pretty darn good uh, ergonomically i like this notch up here um you know while i'm using the knife i hardly ever actually put my thumb up there though i'm usually holding it like this you know pushing through cardboard or um you know well actually yeah no when i'm pushing through cardboard i hold it like this uh, usually choked up so the cardboard can't slip down in here into the finger choil, and then you, it, you know, stops your cutting. If you're choked up, your finger's right there. You know the cardboard's going to stop, and uh, you're going to be able to continue your slicing. Um, so ergonomics good. Action. Um, this is uh, really insane. <laughs> the action on this thing is nutty. Um, you know it's a thumb stud only knife uh, for the deployment, the detent just perfect it's it's absolute perfection you can see there's not much follow through uh, if any with my thumb you know i don't have to like keep pushing this thumb stud uh, out to get it to deploy uh, all i do is just barely break the detent and it just comes flying out it's really nice you can reverse flick it too although um, these thumb studs are a bit pokey you can see looking down from the top uh, they're a little bit pokey. There's like a there's a sharp edge um, towards the tip with the thumb flick. Um, I don't I, I kind of feel it, but it doesn't hurt me. Um, but the reverse flick, uh, I do feel it more significantly. Um, so it is possible, but if you're going to be re yeah reverse flicking this thing a lot, I would probably take a file or some sandpaper and just kind of knock off that edge um, around the the point of the thumb stud. And that's really my, my only big complaint with the knife is the thumb studs. Um, I wish they were a little more comfortable. Uh, I haven't gotten around to fixing mine, but it should be, you know, I would guess pretty easy just to take some sandpaper or a file and just kind of round off the top of that there. Um, so the detent, perfection. Um, when you go to disengage it, there's not a huge amount of lock bar access. You can see looking from the top, you know, this scale really isn't uh, um, brought back or kind of carved out to give you access, but um, there's a large enough area in here, and both the lock bar and this scale side are both chamfered out to create a little spot for your uh, thumb. And I really do not feel like it has bad uh, lock bar access. I can feel, I feel perfectly fine getting in there. Um, I don't feel crammed. Um, obviously, there are some knives that I feel less crammed, but this is perfectly uh, acceptable to me. So you go and disengage it. You can let it fall uh, right to your thumb. If you, uh, you know, it falls and your thumb lands right in that finger choil area. So you're not cutting your thumb. And then you, uh, you let it drop. And it is glassy. Glassy smooth, man. Holy crap. It was smooth right out of the box, but after uh, carrying and using it for a couple weeks, holy crap, dude. I mean, this is, this is so smooth. It's kind of a mix between just fall shut and a hydraulic. I would call it more on the hydraulic side. Um, it's so controlled. Oh, I love it. This is one of my favorite frame lock actions in my in my collection to be honest with you 
Oh, it's so good. And there's no blade play. Crazy. It's that smooth being rock solid. Um... Ah, it's so good. It's so good. It's so blah, blah. I can't even talk. It's so good. Um, lefty, I can do the reverse flick. Can I thumb flick it? Yeah. Um, this is a fantastic knife for the price. And it's a fantastic knife even if it costs more. I, I did a video um, a while back, not, not a super long time ago. I'll link it up in the corner there. Um, talking about these three uh, two sun knives in my collection and two sun in general, and I go over... Um, you know, is it really justified spending, um, you know, 350 bucks on a knife with the uh, exact same level of fit and finish, um, but with better blade steel? Um, you know, cause, uh, we all do that. I do that. I spent that much, um, on my Chavez scapegoat. And, um, as far as fit and finish goes between these two knives, they are exactly comparable. I'm serious. Um. You know, I've said it before, but if I didn't know either of these, you blindfolded me, and um, and I handled both of them, I would not be able to tell you uh, which was more expensive or which was better made. I really couldn't. I might even say that the Tucson was better made. Crazy enough. Um, so it's really, uh, it, it's, you know, it's an interesting thing to think about, right? You know, Um it depends how much blade steel is important to you, you know. Um, obviously, we love edge retention. Um, we love uh, corrosion resistance. D2 is not the most corrosion resistant blade steel out there. Um, so uh, it just depends on what you want in a knife. Um, but I can tell you this. If you want to feel what a very expensive knife feels like on a budget, Tucson is a fantastic option for you especially this one man i gotta say this one um uh, it's just the you know the the uh, the fit and finish on the 269 here uh feels like on another level than my other ones here they're all very good very good but something about this one just feels much more quality i think it's the the, the tolerances and and what's going on in the pivot um when I disengage the uh, the, the uh, TS three hundred here, there's it's just not as glassy smooth. It drops well, super well. The detent's great on this one. Um, something in the pivot just feels a little bit looser. And there's no blade play. There's no pivot lash. It's just more of a feeling thing. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. But this one, it feels it just feels tight and well made and very very carefully uh machined you know um it's amazing um you know this knife is uh out of stock at the moment i believe i'll put links to it down below to white mountain knives um go to that listing on white mountain knives and um sign up for the email notifications if you're trying to get this thing um they do come back in stock um i would say fairly regularly and uh, if you wait and um, keep watching, you will get one. They are still making this knife, so it's not like they're discontinued or anything. I would really recommend it. Um, I would recommend this knife to any, especially any new knife collector, anyone that's um, you know sort of new into the knife collecting game, maybe haven't uh, shelled out the cash for something premium yet. Um, or even if you already have and you just want another really well-made knife in your collection, this thing is, is it's incredible. I've run out of words to, to say how good it is. It's just good, all right? That's about it. The Tucson TS269 is a winner. Thanks for watching, folks. Please like the video before you head out. And, uh, yeah, what else? Consider becoming a channel member. The lowest tier is 3 bucks a month. And you get access to um, an exclusive video that only the members can watch. It comes out uh, every weekend. Um, only for you guys, the members. Uh, you get special emojis. You get access to a private chat on Instagram. And shout out to uh, Chris K., who is a new member. And uh, Sed Stevie, who is a new member as well. 
really appreciate you guys. Um, if either of you guys want to be in the um, the private group chat for the members on Instagram, let me know. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions about your membership, hit me up on Instagram or email me. I love you guys. See you in the next video. Adios.